I'm going to show you my generators. This is my uh, 2000 watt Honda Companion. And what I've done is I've actually attached two pouches on the top of it. That way, uh, when I'm actually loading my vehicle, I don't have to be looking around for all the parts, accessories I need in order to run it when I'm dispersed camping out in the woods. This small pouch right here is what I keep the lid. I'll take this lid off and put this one on it. That way I can attach my external tank to it. I have a seven gallon external fuel tank. This generator only holds like 0.94 gallons. It's not even a gallon. And uh, it is highly efficient, the fuel uh, running it, especially on uh, economy throttle. But uh, with the external tank, I mean, it can run, depending on the low half load with a seven gallon tank, it could run a while, one, two days, running it continuously. Pretty fuel efficient. That's what I have in a small pouch. In this larger pouch, I have the parallel cables. This is what I use <clears throat> to hook up two, both of my generators. It has, it creates a 2,000 watt, hooking up two of them, it gives me a total of 4,000 watts of power when I need it. it. Comes in handy when I want to run the AC, uh, coffee pot, whatever you need for more energy. Also what I have, this here ch uh, charges the battery. If one of my batteries are low, let's say I get in my truck and it won't start, I need a uh, charger battery. Plug this into the generator, put these alligator clamps on the battery, and it will charge the battery for me. This comes in handy. I also have a 30 amp adapter. Plug this into the uh, companion generator. I can plug my RV into it. And I have a screwdriver. This just pretty much helps me uh, put the ground wire on the parallel cables when I'm paralleling both of the generators. So this is pretty much all the accessories, everything I need to run these generators when I'm out dispersed camping. And I think I got these pouches at Home Depot. I got like a little wire thing I've attached to the handle. My other generator, my inverter generator, it also has two pouches, which I think I only have the fuel cap in the pouch. <clears throat> it's nice to have two generators, especially when you're trying to run the AC on, the, uh, on your RV help cool it down inside but during winter camping I only bring one of them normally I'll, I'll only bring the uh, the generator with the lowest hours on top of here I've attached a uh, tachometer hour meter because of the maintenance schedule maintenance I have to do on them it tells me how many hours the generator has been running so if I'm just bringing one generator, I look at the hours and I see which one has the lowest hours, then I'll bring the one with the lowest hours. I can work it that way. Uh, this tachometer doesn't come with the generator. I think I bought it off of Amazon. There's a wire that comes out of it, <clears throat> out of the tachometer. And I wrap that wire around the spark plug wire. And when, it, uh, when the juice starts going through the uh, spark wire it activates the hours on this one so every time I crank it up the hours start counting down this is how I uh, measure when I need to do maintenance uh, every 100 hours I have to change the oil every 200 hours I have to change the spark plug uh, every 200 hours I have to clean the spark arrestor and every 200 hours I have to uh, clean the fuel filter in it it does come in handy also on my uh, phone, on the notepad on your phone, that's how I keep track of when I have to do maintenance on them. I mean, these things aren't cheap. Uh, I think they're between a thousand, twelve hundred dollars each. So this is something you want to keep up on the maintenance on. On my phone, in the notes part, <clears throat> I have generator maintenance, uh, generators, engine oil every hundred hours or six months. 
air filter clean every 50 hours or three months spark plug replace every 200 hours or one year spark arrester clean every 100 hours or six months then I have it broke down the bottom when's the last time I did it on my Honda then my Honda companion <clears throat> I think one of them is due oil change here shortly So you want to keep up on your maintenance on your generators, especially if you want to keep them long term. I definitely keep uh, some type of maintenance record on them because you don't want to have to, you know, get out in the woods, try starting them up, and you know they won't start. That's that's the worst for me, especially if it's 95 degrees out and you're depending on that electric to run your AC. So maintenance records is very important on these things. The next thing I'm going to show you is uh, some of the functions on the generator and I'm going to actually show you how I hook up my external tank to it. My uh, Honda generator companion, you have your echo throttle, which is pretty convenient. I don't need that much juice, I just turn this on and it lowers the engine noise. It works real well. This right here is where I put my parallel cable into to connect the two generators and this is the ground for it when I'm paralleling to both of my generators. This is a uh, 20 amp electrical socket, but I don't want to use a 30 amp. I'm gonna plug a cord in there and use that. This is my 30 amp uh, socket to uh, run my RV on. I want to do the AC or whatever. This is a circuit projector. If something does happen, the surge of energy, I just have to reset it right here. These are some uh, important lights you need to be aware of. This is the uh, oil alert running low on oil a light will come on this one if I do overload it a light will come on and this is my output indicator as soon as I start it up this will turn green saying I'm ready to go it's producing electricity so as soon as I crank it up turn it on this light will turn green and I'll be all set and on this side you already seen the tachymeter right here this is the choke I'm getting ready to start it. And this panel right here, the screwdriver, unscrew it and actually you can access the uh, spark plug and you can uh, check the oil. This is on and off and I'm ready to start it. Turn it on. Ready to turn it off. Just turn it off. And this right here is the pull cable. When I'm out uh, dispersed camping, this is my setup right here. I got my uh, Honda 2000 inverter and my Honda Companion. What I do is try to set up, it's a six gallon gas tank, kind of elevate it, it's a little bit above the Honda, the two generators. That way the fuel will flow better efficiently. One time I was out dispersed camping, I had a, this fuel tank on the ground and one of my generators ran dry. Even though one of my generators ran dry, the other one was still running, I still had electricity as long as those parallel cables are attached. So if one stops, you'll still have at least 2,000 watts of, of electricity. So make sure you try to elevate your gas tank. Gas tank. First tip I'm going to do is take off my fuel cap on both of them. And my pouch, I'm going to take off it, or put on the adapter cap. And I've got each one for a separate pouch. You don't want to cross thread these so make sure you get on there just right. Then grab the external fuel hose, attach it, and attach the other one. It don't matter which side goes to what. So just pick a side. 
Now this one, the black goes in the left side. The red goes in the right. It's for your parallel operation outlets. And the green, you want to screw on to the ground. Now your red to the right, black to the left. And then screw on the ground for your second generator. Connecting your generators are now complete. External fuel tank, what I've done, I ordered this off of Amazon. It came with a six gallon tank, not wood six gallon tank, and I only had one line straight down. It come in a connector and it come with a cap to attach to my generator. And when I bought a second generator, I went ahead and bought an inline fuel filter, some extra hose and some clamps. I just spliced it. Got a little connector here. That way I can run two hoses off this connector off of one fuel tank. It's been working out great. Just remember to include this fuel filter on your maintenance checklist. Change it out once a year. Because you don't want to get no contaminants inside of this. Make sure it lasts for a long time. Now I'm going to do is start them up and uh, see if they work. If you notice, once I start them up, you probably won't be able to hear me. I'm going to hit that uh, throttle switch on both of them. The economy throttle. If you listen to the sound, the engine will actually go way low. There's actually no load on it, so it should be pretty quiet. Turn the generator on, hit the choke, and pull the handle. And once it runs for a couple seconds, undo the choke. Do it the same as the other one. On, choke, start. Take choke off. down pretty good. We're good. Well, I'm the Spurs Camper Man. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you liked it, go ahead and hit like, uh, subscribe. If you want, leave a comment down below. Hey, thanks for watching.